welcome, welcome back, back to <laughs> Two Pastors on a Park Bench. So glad you could join with us today for our sermon series, the second in our sermon series, Game Changers. I'm really excited about this morning. Me too. Well, last yeah. week we had talked about the game uh, Perplunk, um, saying that Christian life is like a game of Perplunk in a couple of different ways. And I thought that was fascinating how um, how Peggy and I had both had the same game, but came up with different ideas. So fun, fun. <laughs> fun, fun. And this week we're going to be looking at the game of so. Mm -hmm. how, how many people remember playing that and driving their friends home and being excited <laughs> about getting home first uh, and the question then becomes uh did the remaining three players see like there was there a first second and third winner of getting home or did you just call it off at the at the one person getting home and I, I I relegate that to house rules. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Because you know, in some houses, second place isn't first loser. Mm. It's just I'm not first, but I could be second. I'd rather be second than third or fourth. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Well, we're looking at the game Sorry today, and uh, if you remember it from years ago. You start the game with four um, little pieces and, and the goal is to make it to home first by pushing, shoving, uh, sending other people back home, regressing, uh, switching you know, places, switching places. You pick little cards and you do what's on the little cards. But and then if you if you actually, um, you know, sent somebody home you'd say sorry but you really didn't mean it <laughs> oh and in our in our sermon series game changers we are we are looking at different board games i mean this is just a fun fun little thing to do look at these board games but then look at the deeper theological perspective on the games mm-hmm a modern day parable, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah. So today's parable is don't live life like it's a game of sorry. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. And, and and there's four different things that we want to to flesh out for you. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to do this. Last week we did um Pastor Diane did one, I did one. Today, it's going to be a little bit more conversational and we're going to be back and forth because we do actually have four points that we're going to be presenting. And the first one is let's not try to keep others from making their way home. Isn't that how we're supposed to live the Christian life? By helping others along instead of driving people back to the start? Isn't that what we talked about last week in the second point? <laughs> Helping others. <laughs> Helping others. Social justice. Yep. So in, in order to win the game of sorry, you need to get all of your pieces to the home location before anybody else. Um, you know, and as we said, the, the way you do that is, well, it's actually twofold. There's a passive way to do it. You, you, you get your cards and you move forward. You move forward. You move forward. That's passive. I'm just moving forward. And then there's the aggressive. You've got four, four pieces out on the board and you pick up a card and, and you're looking, okay, my card says I can move four spaces. If that one goes four spaces, how, where am I going to be? That one, that one. And you pick which one you're going to move that might not just get you closer, but get somebody else further, as in put back to their start position. Right. <laughs> Very aggressive. So yeah. it's a passive aggressive game. It is, it is. But in real life, 
And on our way to our final home, which we as Christians believe is eternity with have with God, eternity with heaven too, in heaven, um, we win by bringing more people with us. Yes. That, that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to, it, it would almost be sorry in reverse. Yes. You know, how can I help other people get home? Maybe even before I am. And, um, win win that way yep um so so instead of um instead of life being like sorry where you you push and you shove and you you push you send back home and all that our life needs to be about inviting encouraging and mentoring others mm -hmm. um matthew 18 6 to 7 says this if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to some stumble. Such things must come, but woe to the person whom they come. That's a pretty powerful verse, isn't it? <clears throat> It is. So if we're not supposed to cause people to stumble, what are we to do? Ooh, that's a really good question. And and the Bible is full of stuff, full of suggestions. Full Here's of it. what you need to do. Yeah. First of and, all, oh. Jesus gives the great commission. And and there's there's one in each of the gospels, but I'm going to share with you what Matthew records. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We're not supposed to push people aside so that we can get ahead. We're supposed to to lovingly bring them along with us. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. Evangelism. Evangelism. And James 5, 19 to 20 says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. I, I love James. Oh, what a great great book oh my <laughs> I, I I quoted a lot from James last week I think <laughs> yeah because it's how how we're supposed to live out the Christian life like I, I love that about the book of James but you know and then uh Matthew 5 and we're just touching the tippy 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 tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. with um all of this how we're supposed to as Christians live a life that is um encouraging for others. Uh, Matthew 5 16 in some in the same way let your light shine before for others that may, they may see your good deeds and glorify God in heaven. And that's the way that we are supposed to live our Christian life. And many of us we're faulty. We, we, sometimes we don't do this mm -hmm. and uh, we, we need to make a conscious effort to uh, be living this way every day. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's not just, you know, living, uh, living our lives is not like the game of sorry, <laughs> you know, it's not just, you know, pushing others aside, but here, here's the second point. Don't say sorry if you don't really mean it. Don't say sorry if you're not truly repentant. Um, in this game, if you land on another player's piece, they have to go back to the start. You land on them. You say, sorry. <laughs> and it you do it like me. that, too. It, it reminds me of, of the Reese's Peanut Butter commercials. Sorry, not sorry. It's, I hate that phrase. Oh, can you tell how upset I am? Well, we actually talked about this a little last night. 
and she ranted for a little while about it. And then I finished by going, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I mean, we're both Canadians, so it's sort of in our DNA that we say sorry. We say sorry all the time, right? We do. We uh, Like I do. It's just a, uh, but, but I truly I, am. I feel sorry. Yeah, when I do and I think it. when, when as Canadians, we say sorry for, you know, whatever, it's it's not the same thing as sorry not sorry exactly you just negated the sorry by saying yeah. not sorry yeah okay let's move on Let, let's move on peggy take it away <laughs> uh matthew 5 33 to 37 says again you have heard that it was said to the people long ago do not break your oath but fulfill to the Lord the vow that you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven or it, uh, or for it is God's throne. Oh, I messed that one up a little bit, but here we go. <laughs> 35, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one of the hair white or black. All you need to say is simple yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. While Jesus was talking about <clears throat> taking oaths, I believe it can be extended to all of our talk. Oh, yeah. All of our talk. Right? All of our talk. He's, he's talking about taking oaths. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't swear. However... In our day-to-day -day language, we we need to to always be truthful in what we say because that's what we're called to. Mm -hmm. um, I I had uh, a friend. We were we we're talking about something, and uh, I said, "No, I didn't do such and such." And they they thought I was trying to hide something. Do you swear? It's like. No, the Bible tells me not to. But can't you just believe me when I say, I'm telling you the truth. I did not do such and such. My word is my bond. My word is my bond, yeah. Um, and it must, saying sorry too, it it includes repentance. Now, now repentance, that's, that's a, that's a big word. It's a heavy philosophical word. It sure is. And and maybe, maybe some of you don't quite understand repentance, or you think you do, and maybe you don't quite get all the nuances. So let me share with you um, what repentance is. Uh, repentance involves someone understanding how actions have caused pain and suffering to another person. It is reviewing one's actions and feeling contrition or regret for past wrongs, which is accompanied by a commitment to and actual actions that show and and prove a change for the better. Hmm. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there, isn't there? there there's a lot of stuff, in, and right now I'm self-reflecting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I am. I'm, I'm really thinking about some things and how... You know, I'm I'm truly sorry for them, but you know, how do I go about making it right? How do I, you know, and in some cultures, there's I I, I love that they they have four stages of repentance, and and I love how this fits into um, our understanding. There's for, first there's the remorse of the heart, so you've done something, you've caused somebody's pain, and it's almost like you have to step out of your own shoes and put yourself in their situation and their, and how your actions made them feel. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it's in your heart, but it's in your head as well. And then there's asking for forgiveness. So you're using your tongue now and you're saying to that person, will you forgive me? And this is a hard thing. Sometimes 
the person can't, or the person won't, or the person will put up <clears throat> boundaries um, around a relationship with you because you've caused pain and you've caused hurt. And you have to be okay with that. And this is where Christianity and, and other cultures were different because we'd also repent to the Lord at this point. And he, if we are truly sorry, he will forgive us, right? Um, and then there is work with the limbs. So, you know, you, you put that repentance into action and you try to make right, if it is safe, if it is safe to make it right. And then the biggest thing is that you resolve to never do it again, to not repeat that particular event, uh, offense. And that's something that we all have to incorporate within our Christian life. Yeah. Um, so when we do something to hurt others, we need to repent and try to heal that hurt if we can. But I was, as I was thinking on this this week, I was reminded of something that King David said. Mm. After the prophet Nathan had confronted him about his sin with Bathsheba, here's what David said in Psalm 51, verse 4. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Was he mm. talking to Bathsheba? Was he talking to her husband? Was he talking to his nation? No, he was talking to God against you lord and you only have i sinned now this tells me that repentance is not just between me and the person whom i hurt mm -hmm. god has a part in this and and we need to seek his forgiveness later on in that same psalm david uh, david writes my sacrifice oh god is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart you god will not despise mm. um when we when we hurt others our sorry needs to mean sorry and it needs to be backed up not just with our words but with our actions mm -hmm. and it needs to be taken to god because he has the power to forgive the sin and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. And, and help us figure out a way as well through prayer of how we can make that right. And mm -hmm. that, that's, that's all we can do at some point. <clears throat> but when you're on the receiving end, mm. it leads us to our third point, which is... Ah, revenge is God's business, not ours. <laughs> Uh, now this point may not be obvious um from what i what we've shared with you about the game maybe you don't recall seeing this on the the outside of the box but on the outside of the box for the game of sorry it says the classic game of sweet revenge Ooh, sorry uh, Oh, what can we say about revenge? Sweet revenge. <laughs> A well, dish you know, like when when you're making your way around the board and you knock somebody off, or if, if that were me <clears throat> and you knocked me off, my goal then is if there's three players besides me playing, my goal then is to get you, not necessarily the other two. Right. Right? Yep. So yeah. it does become... A game of revenge if there's an opportunity to switch with someone even if you're in you know not in a good place on the board i'm probably going to switch to you to send you home because i want to get revenge on you right yeah <laughs> well <clears throat> they say that revenge is a dish best served cold Gee. yep um vengeance well don't get mad get even and uh, what was the other one? I, I don't have it written down here, but um, if if you seek revenge, may as well um, 
dig two graves, one for yourself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, vengeance and its first cousin, unforgiveness, causes us more turmoil than the other person. I'm not saying the other person hasn't hasn't felt turmoil, but but it's that stuff of the heart that is holding on to the revenge that causes us harm. Mm -hmm. Um, I I got a question for you then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What does it mean for an eye for an eye then? A lot of people will say an eye for an eye just leads to everyone being blind or half blind. Um, True. But, <laughs> but the thing is, you have to understand the culture of the time. Mm -hmm. The culture of the time was, well, you scratched me. I'm going to cut you. Oh, you stabbed me. I'm going to cut off your hand. Oh, you cut off my hand. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you see the escalation, right? Yeah. It's just getting more and more. And that's what revenge is like. You cause me harm. I'm going to, I'm going to just pile you into the dirt. How but many movies are based on things like that, right? Too many to count. <laughs> Too many to count. <laughs> the, the, the law of an eye for an eye was actually God saying justice, not escalation. Mm. The eye for an eye was not, if you poke out my eye, I have to poke out yours. It was more along the lines of, if you poke out my eye, I can't do any more than poking out yours. Mm-hmm. And that was all Old Testament, but, and this, this is, we, we have, we have used this phrase before, uh -huh. the New Testament ups the ante on this. Yes. <laughs> it always does, doesn't it? It doesn't it does. mean that the Old Testament was wrong, but it was a different context. It was without uh, Christ. It was at, without the Holy Spirit. So the New Testament says this in room in Romans in <laughs> Romans <laughs> Romans uh, twelve seventeen uh, Paul says Paul tells believers do not repay anyone evil for evil be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone if it is possible as far as it depends on you live in peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is it is written, it is not mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. <laughs> and here's the thing the first few times i read that that passage and and heard that it's like heaping burning coals on their head to me that sounded like revenge it did but that's not the context in which it was used well tell us the context pastor peggy well in the <laughs> day uh people would basically have a burn bundle they would take their, because they were nomads, they, they would have been traveling from place to place, some of them. And when they would um, get up in the morning and then start their travel, they didn't have matches or Bix lighters back then. So they would take a little burn bundle. And if you've watched any survival shows, you will see that. They took a little burn bundle and they would actually put it on the top of their head and uh, wrap it up and they would carry it to their next destination. So bun putting uh, burning coals on someone's head was giving them the means of being able to make a fire so that they could have water, uh, food. Uh, yeah. So it, it's actually helping them. <clears throat> yeah. Imagine doing that to your enemy. <clears throat> Wow. Um, I just lost it. Survivor. Survivor, yeah. 
I love watching Survivor. Have you been watching it this season? I have been. Have you? I have. I have to watch it on Thursday, but anyway, squirrel. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Happens a lot with us, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So in the show Survivor, they show the importance of, of fire. You know, like if you have no fire, you have no food. If you have no fire, you have no clean water. If you have no fire, you have no life in the game. So as Peggy said, you're doing a huge favor a hand up when you're sharing your coals with somebody else and to do that for your enemy that's um that's huge that's that's hard to do sometimes you know unless we're devoted especially given the offense of the person that has hurt you yep um this is not easy we're not we're not saying that this is easy stuff. No, no, it's it's not easy. Um, when we have when we have been wronged, it takes forgiveness in our hearts yeah. to do this. Um, psychologists generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Isn't that interesting that forgiveness, like vengeance, is more beneficial or is more about me. Like forgiveness is beneficial to me and vengeance is harmful to me. Yeah, and we could definitely spend the next hour talking about forgiveness and vengeance easily. And uh, if if anyone is out there and they want to to talk to us more about that, please give us a a jingle or you know send us an email or something like that because this is we realize that this is a very difficult thing to do at times. Mm-hmm. But forgiveness and vengeance is for our benefit. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Which and- leads us to oh go ahead (laughs) well i was gonna say it leads us to our fourth point um and and in the game of of sorry you know you go all the way around the board and then there's this sort of tunnel leading you to home the final spot and once you're in that tunnel you're safe you're safe from attacks you're safe from anybody sending you home or or anything like that and life is not like that life is not like that it is not until we actually get to home that final home to heaven that we are safe from the attacks of satan there's no no place and no time that we are beyond that there's no point from which we cannot fall other than that point of glorification when we reach heaven oh i wish there was a safe zone i'm sorry um there and and there is in a certain way because nothing can separate me from the love of god If I keep my eyes on him, if I keep my focus on him. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be alert and sober of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Yep. Ah. That, that tells us that, you know, Paul was writing to Christians here. The devil wants to see us fall. Yeah. He's doing everything he can. I mean, just look around at at news from the church. I, I get an email, oh, it's probably once a week, uh, Ministry Watch. And it's story after story of things that are happening in the church that shouldn't be happening. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, because it's, it's all... It, it, 
it goes over the, the whole thing. And we never reach a point that the devil doesn't want to see us fall. There is no point. So sometimes he goes after those people that are making a good impact and a difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Galatians 4 9 says this, but now that you know God, or mm. rather you are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weaknesses and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? Ah, oh, man, that's hitting me. Yeah. And, you know, some people, they they have this, this idea that, okay, I'm saved. I'm safe. I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, nobody can take this away from me. Well, nobody else can, but you can forfeit salvation. Amen. And it's, it's important to keep connected to God. Don't live your life like the game of sorry. Do not live <laughs> your life. The game of sorry. No. I hope every time it doesn't mean that you can't play sorry. <laughs> and that's the like, thing. I mean, it's a fun game. It is. It is. I, it, I always have fun playing it. Um, but it's not representative of how we should live our lives, our Christian lives. So and our, our goal in this sermon series is to bring everyday items, up the ante on them, give them a theological um, spin, and just have fun with with this. In we we just came off of a um, a, a deep sermon, you know, series, and uh, but this is very thematic, and and it's it's all part of our yearly planning. So yeah. But don't live life like the game of story. Play it, right. have fun with it, but don't live your life like it. Right. <laughs> so wherever you may find yourself today, find a way to be a game changer. Amen. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.